everyone, and welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation, as usual, as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. Captured effortlessly, that's the way it was, happened so naturally. Hi everyone and welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and today we are going to be having a conversation about COVID-19. How's it affecting your life? Do you have fears? What are your plans? How are you still connecting with people and helping others out? Do you have ideas? I know this is something that is changing every day. And for a lot of people, it makes them really anxious. And I know that we're going to get through this. I see so many cool things happening with people helping one another out. And I think this platform, you know, we want to raise awareness and we want to be able to give people a place to vent and also a place to come together and feel supported and safe because that is absolutely, absolutely critical. And Alzheimer's Speaks has always been about raising everyone's voice and, you know, just we do it in a respectful fashion. Um, So we don't want anybody attacking one another. This isn't the time to do that. It's the time to pull together as a team and, and really I think get back to basics, which I think we've lost a little bit. And so maybe this is a way uh, for the universe to bring us back together and not be so divided because we're going to have to work together on this. I I know for myself, um, people always ask me, you know, where am I going to speak? I'm going to be live and virtual (laughs) because um, everything is canceled. So everybody's life is, is affected in the same way. Um, it's kind of like dementia with this virus. It doesn't care who you are, doesn't care where you live, doesn't care how much money you make, um, you know, ec- ethnic backgrounds, any of that stuff. It is really all about um, we are absolutely the same and getting back to that, that base of humanity. So I'm just going to give a shout out to the Memory Cafe directory because I think right now is a really important time for people to continue to stay connected. And even though memory cafes are usually an in-person thing, I know I'm switching over to doing virtual, which just reminds me, I haven't contacted the memory cafe directory to let them know we're doing that. So that's something that that, uh, probably Dave is overwhelmed with at this point. I also want to give a shout out to Keith Gallus in his book called Parental Dementia, A Guide Through All the Difficult Conversations. Keith is an executive director with over 20 years of experience in helping families with all of these questions. And, you know, it's available on Amazon, Walmart, Barnes and Noble, or you can go to his site, Dementia, uh, Parental Dementia, and um, get the book and use the code Lori, and then you'll get a discount of $5.99 as well. So now is the time, you know, that we can all be eating and sleeping and exercising and binging on TV and doing all those things. We say we don't have enough time, maybe doing some spring cleaning and stuff as well. I think this is a great opportunity. So again, I want to um, welcome everyone who's here and those that are with us right now. I'm just going to have you introduce yourself. So Michael, if you don't mind going first. My name is Michael Ellenbogen and I'm an international dementia advocate. Thank you. And Sue? My name is Sue Ryan, and I am a caregiver of more than 30 years for friends and loved ones. Thank you. And True? My full legal name really is Truthful Loving Kindness, and uh, my current diagnosis is mild cognitive impairment, but I have symptoms of Lewy body and vascular for quite a while, but just progressing slowly. Okay, great, thank you. And Irene. Hi there, Irene from Redmond, Washington, the hotbed of this virus. <laughs> I'm a writer, uh, a mother, a spouse, and a very, very happy grandmother. I was, gonna, I was waiting, if you weren't gonna say grandma, I was gonna throw that in, because <laughs> I know how yeah. important that is. 
Uh, That's so, right. And I should also say that I cared for my father uh, who had Alzheimer's, uh, who is no longer with us as of October 2007. Yeah. And you have also been just a super active member in All's Authors, which has been life-changing for so many people, gathering all the books that are written and highlighting them and, and things. So I, everybody with us is, is playing a significant role in different ways. And so Absolutely. Before, before we start, I probably should recognize that it's St. Patty's Day too. And so I am just going to read an Irish blessing. I'm a mutt, so I'm just a little mix of everything. So <laughs> I didn't wear green today, um, but I know that's not what's on most people's mind. But I think this Irish blessing is really quite nice. It says, may love and laughter light your days and warm your heart and home. May good and faithful friends be yours wherever you may roam. May peace and plenty bless your world and the joy that long endures. May all life's passing seasons bring the best to you and yours. And I think we really need to keep that in mind with everything that we're going through. Um, I know I looked at the stats this morning, and I'm sure that they've changed regarding the coronavirus. And again, not to be alarming, but we have to be realistic in terms of we're just kind of in the beginning stages with this. And I really want to thank, you know, all of our healthcare workers, our police, our EMTs, our firemen, our truck drivers that are, you know, getting us supplies and the people in the stores. You know, we have to wrap everybody at, in safety these days. This is, this is a critical, critical time for us. And it's nice to see the politicians pulling together. I don't really want to get political in this conversation <laughs> per se, mm -hmm. uh, because I think, I think this is really about how are we going to work together and get through this? So, Michael, I'm going to throw it to you first, if you wouldn't mind. Just, you know, how are you adapting in in feeling about the coronavirus? To be honest with you, to me, it's just like any other day. Uh, just got to be a little bit more careful, you know. Uh, as they say, you know, if uh, you know, I went out there and picked up the mail. I brought the mail in. I washed my hands. Something I usually don't do. Uh, so you just need to take precautions and. Uh, you know, not go with all the panic that you hear from so many people, unfortunately. Yeah, I think it's um, important to take the precautions. I know when I go out to the mail, uh, mailman, when he's out there, he's wearing gloves, you know, and I stand back and go go get my ma uh, my mail after he leaves. And, you know, just those those simple things with distancing, I think, are really important. One thing I would like to say, even though I said I wasn't going to get political, I would like to see our politicians stop jam packing around the podium for pictures. You know, this is a time they should really, you know, they, they say they're going to change, but they don't. And I just want to kind of smack them and say one at a time, get your picture alone. This, this, this isn't the priority right now because um, I really think it's so important to lead, lead by example. And and I think that we are all put in those situations where we can lead by example as well uh, right now. Um, Susan, do you mind telling us how you're dealing with all of this? Sure. My husband has Alzheimer's disease and he's been in a memory care facility for the last two and a half years. Last Wednesday, they asked us all to leave and they said only uh, essential personnel would be able to come in, but we would still be able to get on the property to drop things off. And then on Saturday, we were told that nobody can go past the guards gate. They were completely locking it down. And so it's a perfectly imperfect journey. And what we've been doing is the, the facility is navigating getting uh, video conferencing so that people can schedule time to speak with their loved ones. And each of us is evaluating whether that would be more confusing to our loved one or more comforting. Mm -hmm. So again, we're each trying to make that choice. I've been doing things like taking down cookies for the caregivers, sending emails to the team that they can share with the, the other care team members, and doing things to let the care team know how much we really appreciate them. And then I've also, as it relates to my husband, people have said, well, isn't this ter terribly hard for you? And it's really not because my husband is safe and he's happy. He's in an environment where they're doing their utmost to keep him safe and they're taking precautions 
to make sure that that happens with the entire community. And so my responsibility now is to see how I can serve them to better help them uh, navigate their care and their safety for everybody. And then if they need me, know that they can access me 24 seven if there's anything they need. So from that perspective, it's all been very good. One of the kind things they did yesterday morning is that uh, I got an email from the activities director and here's this picture of my husband smiling and there's a piece of paper and it says, hi Sue, comma, and on the next line, I love you. So they're doing things that they can to help us be engaged and see our loved ones as well. So as we're all navigating this really perfectly imperfect journey, it's for me just staying balanced and seeing how I can serve them and help make it as easy as possible for them. So are, would you be comfortable sharing that picture, sharing your Oh, story? I'd love to if you would. Yes, absolutely. I, I I'll pull it up right so now. Powerful. It's adorable. I'll do that right now. Yes. So here's my cute hubby. It comes up very large. I'll make it smaller. But here's my cute hubby. And you scroll down. And it says, hi, Sue, I love you. So, you know, they have a picture of him and, and he's happy. And they've sent something that's like that. So I know that they're reaching out. I also wrote handwritten little notes to each person in the care team to say how much I appreciate what they're doing. And then I'm really grateful for them. So I'm, I'm just doing everything I can to help them know that whatever I can do to support them, that I'm, I'm trying to be there for them. And then also I have a number of people who really are not in a place of peace with this. And I am inviting them to, into conversations and allowing them to consider my perspective of trying to be a little bit more balanced and at peace. I think that is wonderful. I think that's really what we need right now. I uh, switched our memory cafe to being, um, being online. And so I reached out to, of course, everybody in our cafe, but we used to have three groups that met. And then some of those people started their own cafes because they were driving an hour to get to us. And so I reached out to them and just said, you know, you're more than welcome to join us. I know you have a cafe, but I, you know, my guess is they're probably not going to meet. I don't know if they're going to go online, but if, if you need this space, you're more than welcome you know, to join us. And my feeling is people are going to need more of those spaces to, to help occupy their time mm -hmm. and fill their day. And so in doing that, I talked with one gal, Dick is now living in, um, in a memory care. And of course he doesn't, he's at the stage where he doesn't really understand why she can't come. So she was one of those people standing outside the window and they were talking yeah. on the phone. Yeah. Which we're seeing a lot of those that are just wonderful. And again, but again, the, the healthcare um, communities have to be able to accommodate that too and help coordinate, you know, getting people to, to be able to see if someone's not maybe on the first floor, you know, and how does, how does that work? I talked with a, another gal and she was just her voice was just quivering and she says we're just so scared right now and her husband is also placed and she is just deathly afraid that when she's able to get back to see him he's not going to recognize her or will he survive this and she said there's many people like me that are just terrified of of that and so tried to give her some comfort that you know none of us know when we're going to die their connection is so very strong um, talked about the options of visiting, you know, like the other gal did and and stuff. And it's just, I, I think, being able to help people find some peace with this, mm -hmm. that they're not alone. And there will be ways to communicate if it's virtual, if it's standing outside, if it's getting a picture that just melts your heart. I mean, the, the glint in your husband's eye, I mean, you can just see in that smile on his face. He's very content and and things so and that's um, reassuring you know it's very reassuring in this time when we're not we're used to being around them and seeing them and relating with them and, and navigating you know very closely do their nails need to be trimmed what do we need to get and seeing the peace that he has and the joy and that he's he's happy is reassuring one of the other things i've been doing i started last friday a, for me a 10 per day challenge where i'm calling 10 companies or individuals a day just to say thank you, thank you for your service, thank you for your care. The companies who do have the trucks that are delivering, the, the caregivers, the hospitals, the um, uh, Costco customer service, letting people know how much I appreciate what they're doing because the caregivers are going at risk every single day in the, in the health facilities and in the 
hospitals. And so, you know, it's, it was, for me, it's been, uh, I know that when I do service for others, it helps me calm and kind of get above me. And this has been very um, encouraging for me because it's been so gratefully received by others. And I'm not saying it's what everybody does, but it's been one of those things that grounds me very well. I think, I think that's an excellent idea here. Uh, in Minnesota, they just announced that Byerly's and um, Lund's, which are grocery stores, were going to open up from 7 to 8 every morning for seniors and, and um, people who are vulnerable. And now I hear that that's kind of expanding across the nation, and I'm sure it didn't start here, probably started somewhere else. Um, but just making those types of accommodations are huge. So I called them and said, you know, do you want to join us on the show? I know you're probably really busy to, to talk about that. And he's like, no, we've pushed it out. He's like, we have gotten so many calls thanking us. That's I mean, you know, people are really, really appreciative of what so many things that we, we take for granted. And I think even like with grocery shopping, I was listening to, I think it was uh, Dr. Sanjay uh, Gupta and um, some others, and they were talking about, you know, we really need to kind of buckle down and just stay put and go out for necessities. And I heard President Trump say today, please don't panic buy. You know, we yeah. still have our delivery systems in place. You, we need to be able to let everybody get stuff. Um, don't overuse and maybe start cutting back because you know our use usage in America is kind of over the top with everything that we think that we need and I think we're going to find during this time we need a lot less to survive and be happy I think we're going to find families and friends are going to connect more um, I went to my high school group today and I said okay guys we haven't gotten together for quite a while and um so how about if we, we meet for a beer and dinner in our own living rooms and I'll set up a Skype thing and do that because we've got a lot of, you know, I'm 60. Um, we've got a lot of people that live alone and that are scared and, um, you know, don't know what to do and, and we need to still be able to have, have these conversations. True, I want to go to you and ask you how, how are you dealing with all this? Personally, I, I'm very introverted. I don't see much difference in, well, <laughs> my husband's picky one. He, he says, you've got to learn to wash your hands, girl. You know, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and um, I, I'm not learning that very well. I mean, I used to wash my hands all the time when I was working. <laughs> I don't wash them so well anymore. Um, <clears throat> but I never go out. I haven't gone out for a long time because the sound and busyness has been too much for me anyway. The big difference is I am um, dementia mentors, uh, assistant administrator. And so we've got nine chats a week. And so the interaction from other people with dementia is what has the big deal for me right now in that some are panicked and um, they have to talk about it. And some are way overloaded from all the talk about it that they get from every different direction. They want nothing to do with any talk about it. <laughs> And so finding that balance during chat has been a difficult thing. Oh, I, I can see that. Now, for those of you that don't know, Dementia Mentors is an absolutely fabulous organization. And um, True, do you want to explain what Dementia Mentors is and, and the services it offers? Um, ugh. I usually need a cheat sheet just to talk about me. <laughs> okay, well, I, I can give an overview, and then thank you. You. Can, you can you can add in. How's that? So, and and Michael, yeah, you know as well. But Dementia Mentors is a group where if someone is diagnosed with dementia, they can go to Dementia Mentors, and if you go there, you can sign up to actually get a mentor, uh, a person who has been diagnosed, who knows what it feels like to have dementia 
what it feels like to have people look at you after that diagnosis has come into place. And they match you up with someone who they believe will be a good fit. And, um, and basically you meet and they just kind of are almost your, your uh, lightning rod that centers you and lets you know you're going to get through this and that there's many people living well with this. And there's many ways that you can still have purpose and live your life well. And so I, I've just, the relationships that have bloomed and the number of people uh, that they that they work with is just amazing. And so many of those people that come in to be mentors pretty soon, uh, you know, are mentoring others, you know, after a period of time. They also have a lot of videos there um, that are for people with dementia, but also for, for um, care partners to understand a little better what life is like with dementia. So that's a really good resource. And I believe you guys are doing uh, virtual memory cafes as well. Yes, that's what I'm saying, the nine a week. Yep. We have a lot. Um, we had so many on Mondays and Tuesdays. We were having 15 and 16 attendees, which is a lot on a screen. And um, people have a hard time switching when there's that many. So now we have three chats, three group chats on Mondays and two on Tuesdays. and etc. Maybe I should say one of the first things um, I was in in chat after about a, a week. Um, I turned to my husband and I said, you know, when I am in chat, I am normal. And it is a great feeling. Mm -hmm. It's not that I operate any better, but because my peers have the same sorts of problems. You know, all of us are unique. There's little bits of differences here and there, but um, it, I'm normal when I'm in chat. So it gives me a peer group. It's, it's a really comforting and educational thing. Great, great. Michael, any comments on that, on, on feeling kind of that normal around, around your peers at all? in uh, virtual chats and well anytime around i'm around people with dementia i always feel more comfortable just because they understand you know you know that you you have a loss of words that you might say the wrong thing and nobody's going to hold that against you in any way so yeah i, I I think it's always uh, an advantage when you're around those kind of folks. Yeah, I think we all like to be around a peer group. You know, it makes us feel connected and part of community and um, and comfortable. And and that doesn't make any difference if we have dementia or not. I mean, that we that's something I think that is just within all of us. It's kind of a human human nature there. Um, true. So for you, you've kind of you've kind of lived your life a lot on. Um, on virtual um, connections a lot because of the noise and noise factors and the, the busyness and things. Um, so transitioning hasn't been is, is maybe as bad for you um, or is nerve wracking as it is for others. Do you listen to the news at all or do you just let your husband tell you what's up? Uh, my, most of my news comes from my peers. Mm -hmm. um, I know I very studiously avoid the news. It ups my stress level terrifically. And what can I do about it? My influence level is in the dementia world now. And so that change made, um, that's, that's kind of for everybody else. Everybody else has that now. I don't. I have other things. Yeah. But again, I think, you know, what, uh, one of the things that True does so well is uh, you blog and you give great information out um, all the time. So, um, True, how does somebody follow you? Because again, I think there's going to be a lot of people that will watch this after the fact and they want to connect um, to people but just don't quite know how. So is uh, finding you on Facebook the easiest? Um, you can follow me on Facebook. 
uh, I'm on Truthful Kindness, or my blog is truthfulkindness.com. Um, I'm not as faithful on Facebook as, as some are, just simply because I can only handle so many people, and most of my people are people with dementia. I've got hundreds of people with dementia that I deal with, and so I kind of, uh, you know. That's, that's your zone. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, truthfulkindness.com, and depends on your browser where the button is. Some browsers have the follow button down at the bottom left. Some have the upper right, upper left, you know. <laughs> I can't predict where it will be for somebody else's browser. Okay. Well, that sounds good. I have to just mention, too, that, that True and Michael both participate um, in our dementia chats, which are conversations with people with dementia and anybody you know, with dementia is welcome to join that as well. Just reach out to me and we just pick a topic, you know, a few minutes before we record and we, and we go from there. Um, but again, that's another way to, to be able to interact as well. Um, so again, uh, truthful, truthful kindness, uh, dot com or finding her on Facebook and then dementia mentors.org. Sue? One of the things I'm wondering if we could chat a little bit about, you had commented on it and I've heard it from other residents in our community is the, the fear that when we're able to see our loved ones again and share time with them, that they won't recognize it. I'm curious what kind of uh, conversations you've been having with people and things that you're able to do to reassure them. And I'll, I'll share the things that I've learned afterward as well. Sure. And I think that that's a really difficult one because everybody's relationships are, are a little bit different. I mean, I know true you, you get, uh, you'd mentioned you go to the bathroom and you come back to a restaurant and you don't recognize guy's face. You have to wait until you hear his voice. So there's all different levels of that. And many times before even the, the COVID uh, came into our lives, People were worried about that every time they see somebody, you know, will they recognize me? If for me personally, I, um, that wasn't as big of a deal for me because I, I got to another level with my mom where it was like this spiritual connection. I didn't care if she called my name. I just wanted her to want me around, mm -hmm. you know, feel comfortable with me to get that glint in her eyes and the smile and, and um, breathe easily. You know, to me, that was, that was really important. For my brothers, that wasn't the situation. They were personally offended and upset, and um, they, didn't have, they didn't have that, I guess, that belief of um, that we're always connected. And so, you know, I tried to relay stories to people about connection, and even as my mom progress through the disease, even in her end stages, we were connected. Um, and it didn't have to be words and it didn't have to be my name. And so to me, a lot of it is just getting people to believe in their relationships and the depth um, uh, in which they exist. So um, so I'm going to have you talk and then I want to, I do want to get to um, Irene too. Um, but go ahead. What are, what are you doing with your with your husband, and what are what are some um, things you've been sharing with people? Well, I apologize. I, I didn't I didn't mean to have us uh, bypass Irene. My apologies, Irene. Uh, the the thing that has been very helpful for me is we practice this just massive acceptance of this being our journey and radical presence to exactly what's going on, and the way that that's helped us from the very beginning is we have always known that there would be a time when at a head level, they didn't recognize us. And that's part of the disease, not part of who they are. And their heart would still recognize us. And the acceptance of that has not had me seeking out or wondering or cons being concerned about it. The, the being radically present is observing those connections, like you were saying, when they change. And for example, my husband probably couldn't introduce me anymore. He doesn't know my name. He doesn't know that I'm his wife the majority of the time. Yet when we're together and I greet him, which I've done the exact same way since he was diagnosed, 
his face lights up. And so I know that he recognizes me. And then when we're walking, he always reaches for my hand, which he doesn't do for other people. So being present to observe those things has been very calming for me in, in our journey of just, just recognizing it. And part of what I've been asking other people to do is to consider the kinds of connections they have, just exactly like you said. The connections you had with your mom changed from that conversation part to other things you were able to observe. And whether or not she remembered you at a head level to call you by name, she still recognized you from the energy and from the heart. That's very true. And, you know, one story I tell, and I won't, I won't go into detail with it, but even sometimes when they don't say our name, like my mom didn't say my name for three years. And then in this one goofy little moment, you know, I kind of, I, I, uh, she was sleeping and I made some comment that was kind of a joke. And, you know, my mom, <laughs> eyes open, big smile. And she goes, oh, Lori, you know, <laughs> and I, I sat on the bed and I cried for like two hours, just crocodile tears going, oh my gosh, what a gift, what a gift. And, and I didn't even realize that she hadn't said my name for so long because it wasn't a priority. But then when I thought back, it's like, it's been three years and the connection is still there. And so I think, I, I think it's so true. We really have to focus on, on those deep, deep connections. Um, Irene, I want to get to you and, and um, ask you, how are you dealing with, uh, with all of this? My, my husband and I are pretty much homebodies, so it shouldn't bother us, but it does because you don't have the option of being in public and social, et cetera. Um, you know, we're fighting to do, no, no, I get to do the dishes today. You know, something, <laughs> I want to do that. You know, I'm, I'm trying to occupy my time. But the interesting thing, and it's kind of, oh, it's just so strange. I live in an area outside of Seattle. It's in the woods. Uh, we get more snow than people down below, but you know, that, that's how high up we are, but not super high. But our neighborhood, our houses, you don't see the house next to you. So you don't really see your neighbors all that much. All of a sudden, and we have good weather, so that helps. All of a sudden, all these strangers are showing up walking down our street. And they're our neighbors. <laughs> you know, and there are neighbors that we're friendly with and that we do things with and we entertain, etc. But that statement alone brings up, here we are, everybody's on a walk and you know, you're not standing real close to talk to each other or anything. And my husband and I love to take walks and to hike. And I said, boy, this is such a grand time since people have to be home for all of us to get together and know each other better. Oops, no, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that because you're not allowed to get together. So it's really kind of frustrating because you want to be able to help each other and support each other emotionally, psychologically, et cetera, but you can't in person. And so I really appreciate that you've talked about, you know, doing Zoom or doing FaceTime, et cetera, you know, whether you're ho hoisting a beer or hoisting a, a glass of wine to be able to spend time with people virtually. Um, and I have to, of course, bring up my grandchild. So uh, I have a grandson, Lucas, who's going to be three in May. And what really hit me, and we saw him probably for the last time now for a few weeks because his mom is now working from home because of the virus and we won't be taking care of him. Plus, we want to protect everybody's health. But um, the thing that really hit me yesterday is Lucas doesn't know what's going on. He's in this blissful, blissfully unaware stage where... He doesn't know that we're wondering how long our, you know, chicken breasts in the freezer are going to last or, or how long my wine supply is going to last or more importantly, are we healthy? You know, my husband and I take our temperature a couple times a day just to make sure. But he's not even aware of that stress. He is blissfully unaware. And that's a really wonderful place to be. <laughs> and... Um, I, I'll bring this up, and I and I think, Michael and True, you will appreciate this, I hope. Um, when my father was diagnosed, 
he knew, as you both know, because of the diagnosis that you've been, you've received, he was very worried about it and very stressed out about it and would get frustrated if he couldn't come up with a word or he'd get, you know, or he'd forget something, et cetera. And when I was talking to the primary head nurse who in the uh, memory care unit where he lived, I said, you know, I hate that my father is so stressed out about the fact that he has Alzheimer's. And she said, well, someday he won't remember that he has Alzheimer's. He won't know that he does and he'll be blissfully unaware. And I thought, well, I want him to be blissfully unaware, but I don't want him to be that much more removed from me. So it's kind of this lose-lose situation, I guess. But um, I just have to say how Michael and True, how my heart is filled with your positivity and with your joy. And I'm learning something more about what's important and what isn't. And I think you are both exhibiting, as is everybody um, on, on screen today, that during tough times, it can bring out the worst in people, but it can also bring out the best in people. And we've seen the worst. You know, Lori, I appreciated the, what you posted on Facebook, this, this couple hoarding a bunch of groceries and putting it in their, their shopping cart and this little guy with the one can good in his basket. You know, it's like what, that brought out the worst, but there's also a lot of really good that has come about. And I think this is gonna bring us closer together as a country and perhaps as a world once we're able to get close together again. I, I totally agree with you on that. Go ahead, True. I didn't think there was a problem with gathering together outside as long as you keep the three feet. Right. Uh, yeah, gathering together outside, I think it's a, if the weather is good, is a wonderful opportunity because people are home and outside is healthy. Yeah. Yes. Six feet, though. Yeah. Six oh, feet. Oh, okay. Now, now However many left. feet. <laughs> Michael's saying 10 now, so I didn't hear the last <laughs> update. I was trying to listen to it, but I was doing other things when they were talking today. So, but no, I think I, I you know, I, I do think it's going to bring us together in, in weird ways. And I think people are just going to have a, a much better appreciation for the life, the life that we, we had and the one that we have right now. And, you know, people don't seem to be um, fighting too much in terms of, well, no, I'm not, I'm not going to follow these rules. And, you know, I'm in self-isolation right now. I went to New Jersey last week and I saw the difference in flying from Wednesday to Thursday was astonishing. So Wednesday I left and I kind of thought I was dealing with this okay. I wasn't going to let it weigh me down, but I was going to be smart, you know, about it. And I caught myself counting coughs sneezes and who was wearing masks and in minneapolis it was it was really astonishing it was like okay the only person i've seen with gloves is the the um janitors and the cleaning people the only i, I only saw two masks and now i got there two hours before my flight and it, it wasn't packed but it sure as heck wasn't empty but when and the plane wasn't you know was probably half full when i got to new jersey we got off the plane, nine people to clean the plane. Wow. Usually there's one or two. And as we walked into New Jersey and New Newark, um, lots of masks, lots of gloves all over, you know, and went down, got my rental car and <clears throat> nobody had them on there. 
and uh, you know, went back and forth because I screwed up on my car a couple of times and, <laughs> and then finally got to leave, get to the hotel. Everything seemed pretty normal. Um, the presentations that I did uh, were, were much smaller than normal. There was probably 10 in the family session and 10 in the professionals. And most people came with another person and they all separated around the room automatically which was really very interesting in and of itself. Um, a couple of people came out and said that they, you know, did have some symptoms, but it's, you know, it's just allergies, it's just a cold. And we don't know that these days. You know, we can't, I, I say that all the time because I'm always, my eyes are running and I'm, you know, I have a whole allergy thing, but I can't, I can't assume that now. That's not safe. So when I went to leave, check out in the hotel. They're wearing gloves at the front desk now. I drop off my car. They're wearing masks and gloves. They took my paperwork, printed out new ones, and threw my old stuff away, and I needed it, but it was like she had such panic in her eyes, the gal I was dealing with, and it was like, maybe this is new policy. I'm just going to let it go, you know, and so, um, and then in the airport, it was packed. It was packed and it was packed with people that were coming home from vacations early or were ordered home from work and and that was i mean and everyone was you know just kind of um very alert as to what's going on a woman sat in a row ahead of me with her back behind me and she was an elderly woman with a fast a face mask on and i don't know if it was her son or uh you know who knows who that was with her. He had a fast face mask on too. And I coughed and her neck turned. I thought it was going to break off. Her neck turned around and her eyes were filled with such fear. But you talk to people when they're out in public and they're like, oh, everyone's conscious of coughing because they don't want to get jumped, you know, <laughs> or we probably wouldn't jump them nowadays if I run. But, you know, I mean, there is a, and it's weird because you don't even know you're doing it until it happens. And so I was glad to get home. Um, my daughter picked me up and she said, I'm going to pick you up in your car and I'm going to wear gloves and a mask. And mom, I want you to wear gloves and a mask too. She's like, you know, cause she has a daughter who is five, who is asthmatic really bad. She just got over pneumonia not too long ago. And I'm like, I will honor that. And then I got home and she's like, okay, take your clothes off, put them in this garbage bag, shut it, give it back to me. And, and she's like, I'm going to wash this. And so she was very vigilant. And, and then I went upstairs to my space. Thank God I have my own space and where I've been since then. And it took me four hours to clean my suitcase and everything in it and my briefcase to wipe everything down because you you know, you just don't know if they're talking about how germs last and stuff. And I'm like, well, I'm glad I don't have to do that every day because man, that was a lot. So she sneaks me up food and goes, okay, you come out, go get it now. You know, and that's kind of what we're doing right now. But um, I can't see my grandchildren. I can yell down when maybe mom's not on, on their floor and go, hey, knock it off. And then they'll, you know, I still have that or how you do it. And, and so we're still interacting. We haven't done the zoom and things like that. Um, Cause they can see me from the bottom of the steps <coughs> every now and then, but you know, we've, we've just adapted and respected what each other needs because, you know, for my, for my daughter, for example, um, to feel like I did, I don't value her opinion just increases her stress level and things. And so we, we have to be aware of that. And when people's levels of stress are increased, you know, that hurts their ability to uh, build their immune system. And so even, you know, her husband was like, eh, I don't know about all of this and stuff. And he's really starting to come around and they're trying to educate the kids. But, you know, one of the things I've seen is that the interaction i'm hearing him play games and there's a there's a structure and um you know they're not able to do that when they're working and so they're able to spend a little bit more 
I think, quality time together. And not that there's not going to be some rough spots for people, you know, as we're sequestered in our house in terms of, uh, you know, fighting over the TV channel or, or like Irene said, who's going to wash the dishes, you know, um, looking for those things. I've heard a lot of people say, I'm going to do my spring cleaning. I'm going to get a lot done now. I, I've heard people say, I'm going to um, get rid of things, uh, even kids' um, toys and stuff, and we're going to clean them all up so that we can give them to somebody else who maybe doesn't have them and let them know that they've been cleaned and sanitized. I think there's a lot of good that can come out of, of all of this. And, you know, I know it's hard. You know, the bars and the restaurants are closed. The coffee shops are closed. I heard, you know, the drive throughs are going to stay open. Um, the restaurants here in Minnesota are talking about um, maybe, uh, you know, serving food and, and cooking for those that don't have it. They're trying to figure out how to get um, food to, to the kids who relied on their food they got at school. And so in Minnesota, what one of the things they're doing is the bus drivers are probably going to be delivering that. They're taking the next two weeks to figure out their curriculum and they're trying to figure out how to do that. And the bus drivers will most likely be delivering food and curriculum to those that, that don't have online access. So I think the door is opening in terms of how we connect. Um, we're being much more conscious. Sue is saying that she organized her pant pantry, her freezer, and her, <laughs> and her storage closet. I haven't started that yet because I've I've been doing too much stuff with work, trying to figure out what's going on because I know all of my events canceled. And so as a, you know, as a um, individual who's self-employed, that's kind of an ouch you know, with that. But again, I'm not alone at all. There's right. lots of people out of work. And, you know, as a country, we will get through this one way or the other. And granted, it might be tough for a while and it might be different, but different doesn't have to be bad. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I thought it was um, interesting when I was, I was listening to a, a video of Dr. Uh, uh, Santa Gupa and he uh, said, I want to say it was in California, eight doctors are sick with the coronavirus in one hospital and they believe 20 more the tests are going to come back and so they're asking for um for people to really take this seriously because we need we need healthy people caring for us and i know over in italy that's not that isn't an option right now um, sick doctors are caring for people and you know what does that mean uh, they're asking for even construction companies that have these masks to donate them, you know, to healthcare workers. We really have to protect that. We have to respect this social distancing and this isolation to curb this. You know, if everybody wants to get out of their house, then you got to get in your house first. <laughs> you got to follow the rules. Or did anybody see the, the picture of? Italy or the or videos where they're all hanging out their windows and they're singing and playing guitars. I just thought, oh, how, how neat was that? Or they're, they're yelling out thank you to the hospital workers and all the healthcare workers as they drive in every day. I have to go if that's okay. That is fine. That is oh, okay. I apologize. I ha my husband and I are we have one errand we have to do today and, and we need to go now. So um, yay, we get to go outside. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Lori, for all you do and you're tirelessly doing what you do. And I want you to know, I have, even though we're virtual friends, I consider you a friend. And hopefully when the football season starts again, <laughs> yeah. you and I can communicate when Minnesota is playing my Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> yep, that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Blessings okay. to all of you. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. So you had some other things you said you're becoming more flexible with. Can you want to go ahead and share that? So you were making a comment. One of the things you were making a comment of, of that uh, the people were singing and they had a, a video of someone who had used WhatsApp to communicate out the, uh, their, uh, the roof of the building they were on, which was a, a gym. 
And they, this gentleman went up and he was conducting an exercise class and they panned around and there were people on their balconies all around doing exercises. And so it was just a way of giving back and kind of raising people's spirits and things. And one of the things that I've seen from so many different things people are doing is we're being invited into the best of our humanity. And we often don't slow down enough in our normal days to consider that. And this is such a great opportunity for us. I really believe that while we're in a, 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 a time right now where we've got some challenge, many of us who are either living with the, the diagnosis of dementia or caring for someone with it have already been invited into how we navigate uh, disruption and, and what we do to stay balanced. And I believe that we have the opportunity for people who may not have ever faced that again to share that into a community who's not sharing our diagnosis, but who's sharing the emotions of it so that we, we can try to figure out how to be more balanced with it because we've had to really learn that at a very, a very high level and we, we had to learn it instantly and have continued to learn to navigate it. So we're a great resource for many, many people around us. Well, I agree. I, 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 that's one of the things I admire about the dementia arena um, and community is they're always adapting. And you don't really hear people squawking about it. I mean, it's a challenge, um, but they get so creative in terms of how to make things still work. And you know, that's what really life is all about. We're constantly adapting. We're, we just haven't been conscious of it. Right now with, with the virus, we have to be very conscious of everything we do because we have worked, uh, you know, on a kind of pilot mode. I mean, how many of us, of us have driven a car and go, how did I get here? You know, because you don't really remember the drive because you're right. going 12 million other places. And so we, we have to become conscious again to our surroundings, how we um, react or it, are we going to be proactive? Are we going to, you know, spin and worry? Um, about everything we don't have control over, or are we going to um, sit back and, and let go and, and figure it out as it unfolds? Because things are changing constantly with us. And so I think it's going to be a good lesson for people to not over plan because, you know, um, I, and I've, I've learned to let go a lot through, you know, my mother's experience of living with dementia for 30 years. That was a real big blessing for me because it allowed me to live more in the present moment. And I think that's what we're all, we're all kind of being gifted that right now. We have this time, it's different. I, how are you going to look at life? You know, what do you want it to look like? What do you want it to feel like? You know, who do you want to be remembered as? You know, do you want to be that person who reaches out and lifts other people up, you know, or helps them out? Hey, I'm going to the grocery store. So you call the neighbors and go, you guys need anything? Take their list. You can drop it off for them and, you know, divvy up stuff. There's ways to pay electronically. Um, but then only one person is going out instead of everybody. I mean, there's, there's so many opportunities, I think, for us right now. Um, True. Any last minute comments? How about you, Michael? Well, the only thing I guess I would like to see is I, I'd like to see this being a little bit toned down. Uh, I, I get many emails and uh, I've been on uh, a lot of websites where people are really blowing this way out of proportion. And uh, like you had just said earlier, Lori, I think the biggest part of this is really going to be the financial impact of this rather than really the health issue itself. I mean, we can do all kinds of things to protect ourselves from the health side of things, but it's going to really be the financial side that's going to have the biggest impact. So people really need to start thinking what they can do and how to improve not only their lives, but the lives of others that we're putting at risks by taking the right precautions. I mean, the people in the grocery stores don't have a choice. The people in the medical industry don't have a choice. You know, we shouldn't be jeopardizing these people. Let's do our part and that's and not and not create the panic out there. Agree. It really has to be a, this kind of global consensus of working together. And we have, I, I think, gotten very kind of small minded and become a world of me instead of we and so i think we're really gonna 
you know, um, literally flip that me around to a we <laughs> and, a, and a, you know, a greater collaboration. And I, I, I do think as difficult as it might be to change our schedules, especially when it's not in our control, you know, it's not our idea to stay home. Um, yet, how many times have people said, gosh, I'd like a mental health day or I would like an extended, you know, people aren't taking this into consideration. Use this time wisely. There's so many beautiful things that you're still able to do. You can still communicate. We are blessed with the availability of, of various platforms to communicate to people. And um, the, you know, the money thing, none of us can fix that one. So that is one that is really, you know, maybe stop listening to the stock market roller coaster. Um, I know that can raise people's blood pressure <laughs> and really get them very nervous. Again, you can't control it. I can't control it. The president can't control it. The, the, the global community at this point can't control it. They're putting in restrictions where they can, and we're just going to have to let the dust settle and, and then deal with it and worry about it when there's a time for that. Um, you know, if you're short of cash, many people are going to be, but you know, we've, they're putting things in place like the, the unemployment money is, uh, somebody said that they were going to try to get a thousand dollars out to every family that was in need, um, right away. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but I heard that that was stated this morning in the press conference, putting telemedicine in another level. They're getting the, the Army Corps of Engineers uh, set up and the reserves, FEMA, um, daycare. There's, there's so many different levels. If you, you know, if you have an idea for something to do, don't be quiet about it. You know, connect with the people that can make that happen, especially if it's in your industry. I, I just look at, you know, the, the Walmarts and stuff saying, you know, use our parking lots you know, for these drive-through testings. I think we are seeing, you know, the nation coming together. And hopefully us as individuals will, will do the same. Um, Susan, any last minute comments from you? Lori, I'm really impressed with the comments you made. I have nothing else to add. I really thank you for having this conversation be available to so many people to help bring them some peace of mind. Thank you very much for what you're doing. Well, thank you. I think it's about helping people learn how to connect differently and stay engaged and, um, you know, take time to sleep a little bit more if you need some rest or look at your to-do list and, and what do you want to attack right now? I think for most of us, there's not going to be a limit of what we can do. It's what we choose to do. And we're in control of that. That is beautifully said. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you all. We will talk soon and maybe we'll do another one of these uh, in a couple of weeks and see how people are faring. Thanks for your perspective. Appreciate your time. Bye-bye. Goodbye.